Hello and welcome to this presentation on building new council housing for the new homes projects in your area. My name is Nancy and I work for Open Communities. At Open Communities we provide independent support to resident groups across Southwark and work with the new homes project groups to help residents understand the proposals to build new council homes in their area. This presentation should take about half an hour and we will cover an overview of the planning process and planning law, an outline of design standards and where they come from and an awareness of building regulations. Along with this presentation, you should have a handout consisting of eight pages. Page one looks at the planning application process. It explains what happens to a planning application when it is submitted to the local authority and how the council make a final planning decision. Page two explains the space standards for new built housing in London. This is a guide set out by the Greater London Authority. It sets out the minimum sizes new units should be. Pages three, four and five are policies taken from the Southwark Plan. The Southwark Plan is, sets out how the council would like their area to be designed and these policies look at how housing should be designed. Page six sets out the space standards for Southwark. Page seven looks at the play standards for Southwark and page eight sets out a range of planning application documents that are likely to be submitted as part of the planning application process. Slide three sets out the different stages from having an idea about building new homes through to when residents move in. The left hand column sets out the activities while the middle column explains what the New Homes Project Group will be doing and the right hand column gives examples of the consultation at each stage. You will have seen at the first drop-in session for residents on the estate a capacity study which is the architect's first idea of how many new council homes it might be possible to build on the site. Most of the work of the New Homes Project Group will be developing the design of these new homes. This will involve you working with the architects as they find out more about the local area and you provide them with more information about what could be built on the site. This will include identifying the constraints of the site and how the site works for the residents on a day-to-day -day basis. You will give architects ideas from local knowledge about how things work on your estate what has been tried in the past and what doesn't work. You can identify what improvement residents would like to see in the area and what is most important to people who live on the estate. In developing the design stage, the architects and the agents will take this information along with technical information and put together a proposal. This will include more detail and there will be further consultation as the design stage goes through. The New Homes Project Group will initially work with the council and the architects up to the point where there could be a planning application. If a future planning application is approved, there is a lot of work that follows the planning application stage to produce technical detailed plans. These need to be a level of detail that show the builders exactly what they need to build. Before any construction is to begin, the council will have to enter into a contract with the builder, either through using a tender and bidding process or by using a builder that is on an existing long-term contract that has already been through a tender process. This is to check that the chosen builders have the skills and experience to build on part of an existing estate surrounded by residents and can build up to the required quality at a reasonable price. During the construction stage, some of the work of the New Homes Project Group will be to meet regularly with the council 
and the builder to monitor the work of the contractors, identify any issue for residents and work with the council and contractor in resolving any problems. On Sku Gardens, the project group has met monthly with the council and the contractor during the construction stage, which has seen issued shops become demolished to make way for new housing. The completion and defect liability in stage includes the contractor handing over the newly built homes to the council and the council letting the new homes. There will be a local letting scheme that will give residents living in the local area on the housing register with band three priority or above first choice to move into the new homes. There is a one year defects liability period as part of the building contract. It could mean that when the builder leaves the site, they must come back and fix problems in the new homes during the first year tenants are living in the new homes. The builders do not get paid their final instalments until the defects identified during this period are fixed. Planning applications of large size would be decided by a planning committee made up of local councillors. We will consider some of the rules and regulations that the councillors must take into account. It is the councillors on the planning committee who decide whether a planning application is accepted or refused. Decisions must follow national planning guidance from the government, regional planning guidance from the Mayor of London and local planning guidance set by Suffolk Council. On the first page of the handout you will see a flowchart that sets out the process and the steps the council must follow when it receives a planning application. This starts with the checking of the information that is submitted before the application can be validated. The consultation that the planning department must carry out with neighbours, other organisations like the electricity and water companies, network rail, highways authorities and others, and then prepare a report that compares the planning application to the national, regional and local policies and summarises all the response to the consultation carried out and the report then makes a recommendation to the councillors on whether the planning application should be to accept or reject. In slide 5 we see that the planning committee can approve an application subject to conditions or may refuse a planning application. Normally where a planning application is approved subject to conditions, the conditions require the need to provide more detail, such as the shape and sizes of the actual bricks, the colour of the window frames, the overall layout, play equipment that's used in green spaces. Slide 6 sets out the process of developing a design. The council is currently at the first step of the process with a capacity study that shows what it might be possible to build on the site with an idea of the height, size and shape of the new building. This then gives an idea of how many homes may be provided. The capacity study is refined with consultation with residents to take account of what already is in place nearby including existing homes, underground surfaces, mature trees, some of which may be protected by tree preservation orders. Your knowledge of how the existing space is used and what could be seen as a positive improvement by residents will influence the design as it develops. The architect will provide options for the layout of new buildings and how they are organised and how they fit in with the existing buildings in the area. There will be further consultation on the new proposals with residents and neighbours before any planning application is made to make sure that everyone understands what is being proposed and why. 
After some of the initial drawings have been drafted for the new homes, there will be a pre-application meeting with the planning department to find out how the planning officers views the design. Their views will be fed back to the new homes project group and then improvements to the design can be made taking account of all the comments. Before any final planning application is submitted, there are a whole variety of different studies that need to be produced as background and technical information to make sure the design doesn't harm anything in the existing area. For example, sunlight and daylight reports may be needed to look at the shadowing of the proposed buildings and contamination reports may be needed to ensure the site is safe. On the last page of your handout, you will find a page that lists out the documents submitted for a planning application for school gardens for a new block of 25 council homes being built by the council. It includes a daylight and sunlight assessment measuring the impact of any new building on existing homes and whether the new homes will have sufficient daylight and sunlight. This estate is a conservation area, so there is a heritage statement setting out how the proposed homes fit in with the design of the homes around the area, as well as drawings and plans of the existing block, which shows the disused shops that were demolished and the proposed new homes. There is also a design and access statement setting out how the servicing of such things like rubbish collection, parking and transport to the new homes will happen. It will also look at the construction phases and the construction work being undertaken on the site. All of these reports are needed as part of the planning application for the planners and the councillors on the planning committee to understand what is being proposed, the impact it will have in the short and the long term and to be able to compare the application to the national, regional and local planning regulations. We're now about halfway through this presentation, so there's about another 15 minutes to go.